earlier on, no matter how strong our determination is to do right, we will not be able to keep God's law unless we first have strong and genuine love for God Himself. For loving Him will give us the inner power to walk in His way. And so, today we'll be speaking on the topic, First Love. And our text is taken from the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 5. And it says, You shall love the Lord your God with all your hearts and with all your soul and with all your mind. Let's break down this verse we just read into three significant parts and what they stand for. Number one, the hearts. You want to go say the hearts. We shall love you shall love the, the Lord your God with your heart. So what does the heart stand for? Also, the heart also stands for the mind. It and, and which, which is also the seat of understanding. You cannot love someone that you don't have understanding of. Even your spouse that you love so much, your children that you love so much, you have understanding of them. You know what makes them think. You know what makes them move on. You know what makes them sad and what makes them happy. So you must have the understanding of God. And, on, and having the understanding of God is having the understanding of the scriptures. It is not that you must know the Bible in total. It's just for you to give yourself time to read as much as you can read, hear as much as you can hear, and allow the Holy Spirit to begin to expand it in your hearts. Number two, the soul. What does it stand for? It stands for the thoughts. And is at the center of your will and personality. It is in your soul that you want to respond to the things of God. It's in your soul that you want to obey God. You know, you could Bible say you have given us the will to choose evil or good, bad or there are all these kind of things. So it is your it is within your right and your within you for you to begin to have God's thoughts in your mind. It is what you allow God, this is also allowed in your mind that you can you can permit. So if you allow God to envelope you, if you have, if you allow God to thoughts to run through you, that's where you begin to develop the love of God more in your heart. Number three, the mind. As representing the outgoings and the energies of all your virtual power. What does what do I mean by this? You present your outgoing, meaning Sometimes it might be your finances, the way you spend your money, the way you receive your money, and what do you do with your money? Because so if you love the Lord, if you love God, you actually sow into the kingdom of God for the expansion of His world, and also you also invest yourself into the things of God. Now, the New Testament itself, the New Testament itself requires no more than total self-surrender of man's to his maker. God wants complete love from us because he loves us completely. We get that in the book of John chapter 4 verse 19. He says we love him because he first loved us. Why? By giving him son to die for us and to redeem us from the cause. Now what does it mean to love God? Number one, it is to obey his word. We obey his command, not because we must, but because we want to, because we love him and we are able to obey him because once we believe in Christ and we are saved, we are remade and we are not the same people we once were. According to Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, he says, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have gone. Now comes the new. When we obey the Lord, we live a life of joy, without shame, rooted deeply in His Word and confident in His eternal hope. When children of God, that is you and I, obey our earthly fa- our heavenly Father, we, He is glorified. Jesus told us that the plan is for others to see our good deeds and glorify God in heaven. Matthew chapter 15 verse 6. Of course, performing good deeds requires obedience to the one who has called us to good deeds. That is why we must obey God. Number two, how, 
What does it mean to obey God? Number two is to have faith in Him. Faith is necessary to please God because without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without faith, it is impossible to love God. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6, it says, And if our faith is genuine and true, we will live a lifestyle categorized by righteousness, modeling the example set for us by Jesus Christ. Number three, what does it mean to love God? Is to have fear of God. The fear of God we are talking here is not the fear of, of, of someone threatening you or the fear of someone that is going to do something evil to you or the fear of uh, maybe af- afraid of one bad person or, or, or one terrorist. God is not a terrorist, like I always say. So the fear of God, is we are talking about the fear of reverencing God in whatever you do. So the love of God is to reverence God in all your undertakings, in all you do. After all, the psalmist said in the book of one, uh, Psalm 128 verse 1, it says, Blessed are those who fear the Lord, who walk in obedience to Him. So what does it mean to obey God? What does it mean to love God? Number one is to obey God. Number two is to fear God by reverencing Him. Number three is to have faith in God. God is gracious. So, if you haven't been living for Him, if you haven't been following his command, if you have been living in and for the world, you can be transformed by the blood of Jesus Christ. God can forgive you. He will forgive you. And he will choose to forget all your sins just as if it never happened in the first place. God is, is to be glorified. And when God is glorified in your life, he extends his forgiveness because it is written in the book of Hebrews chapter 10 verse 16 to 17 he said i will put my laws in their hearts and i will write them on their minds their sins and their lawless acts i will remember no more in conclusion obedience is an attitude we must learn it is not an attribute that we get automatically it is not a trait that we obtain when we give out to christ it's an attitude that we must learn Bible says Christ learned obedience by the many things he suffered. So obedience is something we must learn. And the way we can learn obedience is by submitting entirely to Christ. It's by submitting to the will of the Holy Spirit. You know? And it is not, like I said, it is not, it's not a church we automatically acquire when we become Christians. Thankfully, the Bible gives us a clear instruction on how to obey God. And Jesus also provides us with a perfect example of his love and, shum- and submission to the Father. The most joyous people in the world are those who are constantly and consistently seeking God's love and keeping his commandment and obeying him. And on this note, I say thank you for taking time out to listen to the word of God. Do have a wonderful day and God bless you.